Well, you may see a pile of junk, but I see potential. When I come back, we're going to restore this 1930s desk lamp to its former glory. Stay tuned! Well, nice attractive desk lamps as you see here. This one in need of serious reconstructive surgery. Were common gifts in the 1930s along with Parker pens, nice uh, brass bookends, and other accoutrements for the desktop. Now this one clearly dates to the Depression era and as usual, many of these uh, lamps are made out of several different types of metal. And so we may have a brass or a copper shade. This is actually in pretty good condition, although it has lost its applied patina. We're not going to worry too much about that. Over here, the base of the lamp is actually made of a different metal from this decorative, uh, almost music lyre shape in the center. And that's the reason why we have uh, uneven oxidation or uneven uh, wear from just the passage of time. So if you look closely at the base of the lamp, which happens to be a heavier metal, um, this still retains a lot of its gold patina. Now this is not uh, bronze and so this is not ormolu. These lamps were fairly inexpensive, at least this one was. I'm not going to have uh, to do a whole lot to the base. Uh, that's the original and it looks really good. Then we have a little slab of green uh, marble, probably onyx. And then we get to the problem area here, this center. Uh, I'm going to just call it a music lyre. It is dull and lackluster. And it's lost all of its patina. It would not have looked like this when it was new. And now we just have this ugly gray pot metal. And actually, uh, it's bent just a little bit. I'm not going to uh, twist it back into shape because, as you know, pot metal is a cheap metal and it becomes very brittle. It can crack and break. And there are no cracks or breaks in this one. And I certainly don't want to cause any. So, all I really want to do is reapply a patina to this so that it. Uh, matches or at least is close to what we have on the bottom and uh, uh, let's talk about what's wrong with the lamp that finish is going to be no problem we're going to work on that in a few minutes but over the years people will put on new sockets totally inappropriate this shiny cheap looking pull chain that's no good so we're going to remedy that and then we have a couple of cords here that have been replaced, line cords, the electric cords. This uh, silvery color, gold color plastic cord was put on at some point. And I guess there were some problems and somebody spliced together this brown one with this awful, almost vacuum cleaner looking plug. So the electric cord, no good. The socket no good, the finish is all wrong on this lamp, and it needs work. So I'm going to show you how to restore the patina on this metal. And then, details matter. So we're going to go over here to my stash of antique replacement parts. I'm going to be using a antique Bakelite plug here. We'll get and focus there with the acorns on it and this is brown bakelite don't worry about this old cord here I'm going to take that off I'm going to be using an old brass uh, socket which looks will look so much better than this plastic thing and we've got a pull chain here an old socket with a pull chain that has oxidized and aged very nicely that's going to look good on the lamp and then finally, for that nice touch, I'm going to be using my replacement uh, replica. 
And then finally for that added finishing. And then finally for that really added touch here, I'm going to use my reproduction replacement rayon or silk cloth, silk covered uh, electric cord, which will just bring this lamp back to the way it probably looked when it was new in the 1930s. So let's get this camera set up. When we come right back, we're going to talk about patina and how to restore this harp. Well, this restoration project is actually so easy, I'm almost embarrassed to call it a restoration progress because anybody can do this in their own kitchen in a very short time. The two products that I'm going to use, and I highly recommend, first is Rub and Buff, the original wax metallic finish. Now, I bought this at one of the big box craft stores. You'll probably have one in your area. And I suppose you may be able to find this made by other companies, but this is Amico. See right here, Rub and Buff. This particular color is called Antique Gold. I keep it on hand. So here's the tube we're going to use today. Uh, you say, well, that's a really tiny tube. Well, I'll tell you what, a little bit of this goes a long way. You're about to see that. I love this stuff. And then I'm also going to use, and I'm sorry to show you how rusty my old can of brown shoe polish is. Now you can use black. I'm using brown today because it's what I have on hand. And um, this has been around for a while, but as you can see, I haven't polished my brown shoes lately. And that's all we're going to use. I'm going to be able to get uh, this looking just like this. Now, if you took the spray paint, this would be shiny and metallic and it would really look brand new. But here we have just a hint of gold and it looks very nice when we compare it uh, to the base. And there's still one more final step, which I haven't done to this, which will bring out the gold even just a little bit more. But really all you do with this stuff, this product, and uh, so it's in this little tube right like this. And I'm gonna take, turn this sideways. Well, actually, let me get it on my finger first. And I'm only going to use a tiny little bit of this. You see that? That's nothing at all. Just a little tiny bit. I think the light is so bright you can't really see what I'm doing. There we go. Now I'm going to come up to the piece here and uh, just start to apply it. It's very easy to do. Rubbing it on. Now if you want, you don't have to press very deeply and it will not go down into the crevices. Yeah, uh, I'm going to go ahead and really smear that in. And I can even get some on this side. And you just use your finger. It smells just like wax almost like a shoe polish as well. And then what I uh, like to do is just take something like a nail and I'm gonna scrape down in here. Where it's getting all clogged up in the cracks and crevices and uh, smear this out some more. How's that looking? That's the before. There's the after. And then you know what's going to happen next. I'm going to go into my shoe polish. And you can put as much shoe polish on as you want. This is going to add uh, some depth to the piece. I'm getting quite a bit of it on my... Now you know why my hands are always dirty. This is why my fingernails are always a mess. And now I'm going to go in and just rub this brown along here to sort of give it some depth, darken it up just a little bit. Now that's too much, okay. That's all right. Take this uh, nail that I've got here and I'm gonna go into the grooves. 
scrape it out. See, if you if you skip this step, you wind up with uh, with a finish that really doesn't have any depth to it. In my humble opinion, smear that on again. All right, and then I'm going to do one more uh, highlight. Just get a little bit more of the stuff. I'm trying to make sure I'm in camera. And um, go over it again. I want it to be a little shinier. But I've got that brown wax underneath. Okay, I think I'm starting to get what I'm after. I'm going to do this again. Go in here and get it out of the grooves a little bit because I want I want you to look in and see the brown. I don't want all the gold uh, down inside. Which is actually the, the reverse of the way it would wear. The, uh, the gold would wear off of the highest part of the relief and you'd be left with this gold down inside the little crevices, but I'm kind of reversing that. All right, you can't mess this up. You just can't mess it up. There we have it. Um, let me see if I can get it to where you can see it. Now, when we, now of course I have to do the rest of it, but I place it back on the, on the base of the lamp and uh, that's a pretty good match. I don't want it to, it doesn't have to match exactly. Now ignore this part here. Then the last thing I'm going to do, well, after I finish doing the whole patina, is I'm going to spray this with a, a satin coat of um, uh, uh, of lacquer. Just just a nice lacquer. That's going to seal this. Let that lacquer dry. A coat of satin. If it's too shiny, then you just take a little steel wool and you just buff it down a little bit. But that clear coat of satin lacquer is going to protect this and uh, keep, keep it from deteriorating and uh, seal everything and this thing will be good for another ooh, 80 years. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and finish the patina on this and then we'll put the camera on fast speed and do all the electrical work and get this baby plugged in and happy days are here again. <laughs> okay, let's get to work! <laughs>
there it is, all finished. Now, I didn't put you through the agony of watching me wire another light socket, so I turned the camera off for that because I really just wanted to show you that you can do this restoration work at home. I'm gonna leave this just like it is. It has a warm old look to it. And, uh, but if we go down here now, you see we have an old chain, so much better than that shiny brass thing we had before. And as you can see, I'm pleased with the way the center of the lamp looks now. When before it was just gray, ugly pot metal, now it's got an old finish on it that I think looks pretty nice. And I love looking up inside of the lamp and seeing a fine old socket instead of that black plastic thing that was there before. And of course, the gold cord just adds the right touch of authenticity. So the lamp is now lit. Back up and let you see it. I'm happy with it. Yes, I am. And I'm gonna put it on my desk and use it. It looks like it did when FDR was giving his fireside chats on that radio right there, which is a 1933 Crosley. Uh, not a reproduction, that's the real thing right there. Well, everyone, don't be afraid to go out and find some old lamps. And if you've got any questions, let me know. There's lots of different ways you can refinish lamps like this. I hope that you'll find this one satisfactory and that it meets with your approval. Okay, everyone, that's it. I'm Scott from the old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching and so long for now.